none of this was here. The tell was the city. There was a city with walls up there on that mount. Okay, so behind you over here, if, if to orient you a little bit better, I probably should have done this. This is my fault. I blame the lack of coffee this morning, which is I figured it out. I didn't have coffee yet this morning. Oh. But thank you for praying blessing upon me. I needed this. <laughs> so so the the Jezreel Valley, okay, that we were up on top of, looking down from Mount Carmel and then Megiddo, looking into the valley. That's there, okay? So my left hand is one wall of the valley and my right hand is the other one. So it's gonna run east and west like that. We were clear down there on this ridge on Mount Carmel looking back this direction, okay? So when we were on top of the, where the monastery was at and we were looking, um, you looked down the valley, if you could peer through the fog and mist, you'd be able to see that shot, okay? It's, it's over here. Now, um, that's where you're at. And then you have the Jordan River Valley that's doing that. So this city became huge and prosperous because it was at the crossroads of those two major thoroughfares. Is that making sense for you now? Yeah. So you're at the edge of the Jezreel Valley. So all of this stuff, and Armageddon and everything about being the most strategic place on earth and all of that, that's that valley. And then the Jordan River Valley is all the transient stuff going on between Syria and the Northern Empires following the Jordan River to get to Jerusalem, to Jericho, I mean, all these places. So this is a, a major crossroads right here. So it, it always has been that way. That's why the ancient city of Basham was a prosperous, powerful city. And then the Romans came in and built their prosperous and powerful city at the base of it, okay? The reason I explain that is because the reason that the Philistines are marching in and invading <coughs> at the time of David is that Saul is getting weak. This is obviously the end of his reign. He's no longer um, an effective ruler. And the, the Philistines sense that weakness, and so they march um, much farther than they ever have before. Prior to this point, they just kind of do little incursions into the hill country. So they're, they're over there on the plains by the Mediterranean, and they're occasionally going in. Jerusalem is that way. So, so you're going to occasionally going in and making incursions. This time they are emboldened enough to unite their kings of the five great Philistine cities, and they march around through the valley to cut off the northern tribes from the tribes over here. Because where were we at yesterday? What was the city we were at? Tell. Dan. Dan, right? So all Naphtali, all those places up there, those tribes would be isolated if the Philistines could march in here, take over this valley, and secure the strategic stronghold. So they're feeling emboldened because Saul has not given them any reason to feel otherwise to that point. So they're bringing their armies in, and who's marching with them? Who remembers the story? David. David, David. because David is a mercenary warlord at this point in his career. He's got he's got his men that he's trained out of the caves of Adullam, and um, they're marching with the Philistines. And there's this absolutely hilarious story. <laughs> I should get it out and read it, but we're out of time. Uh, we'll talk about it on the bus some too, where the king Akish, one of the Philistine kings, he thinks he's got David as his boy, I and mean, he thinks he's got him as his little private pet, uh, trick performing warrior, and so. Uh, he's bringing David and his men, <laughs> and uh, and the other Philistine kings see this, and they go, hey, wait a minute, isn't that David? Oh, yeah, 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 he's good, he's good, he's with us now. Uh, no, 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 the David that they say killed tens of thousands of us in song, <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> so there's no way in the world we're going to let that guy march at the back of our army. And so uh, Akish is like, no, no, it's okay, it's good. I'm paraphrasing, this is a little bit of a message for you, right? He says, no, it's okay, it's okay. And uh, the, the other Philistine rulers say, no, it's not going to happen because when the battle turns, he's going to attack us from the rear and join Saul and Jonathan. And so, uh, of course, that's exactly what David was going to do <laughs> in the battle. But David has to turn away. So anyway, just on a serious note, though, this is the last encounter, even though it's a bit at a distance of David and Jonathan. Okay, so Jonathan is over there and Mount Gilboa is up and behind us over here. We will see it driving out. We'll be pointing out to you as we're driving out. They're encamped up there. That's where the Israelites are at. David and the Philistines come down the valley there, they're, and armies are positioned in proximity to the city because the city is what they're all trying to control, right? So they're in proximity, but they got to keep their troops near water. Um, the same spring that Gideon sorted his men at is right over here. That's the spring that they're they're using as their water source. So. David is told to go away, and so David turns and leaves. And I've always thought there's just this poignant moment in David's sphere because Jonathan may or may not have known he was there. But I think David may have had in his head this joyous reunion where after all the years together and the closeness of their relationship, David and Jonathan are going to have one last um, chance to reunite, and it's going to have a happy ending, and they're going to slaughter Philistines together, and they're going <laughs> to celebrate at the end of the night. And they're gonna, and, and I 
you wonder, this is speculation, but I think David, when he turns and marches his men away again, he knows that's the last time he ever would have had a chance to see Jonathan because the, the Israelites are doomed at that point. And so David marches away, and of course this is that very eventful week. Of, my first book is based on this, just this one week in the life of David. He marches away in the south where David's men have their town. Um, the Malachites raid out of the desert and uh, destroy their city and capture their families. And so David's returning to that. While simultaneously, um, Saul consults the, the witch of Endor, the media of Endor. Endor is that direction. You go up and over those, those hills right there. And so Saul leaves Gilboa, crosses the valley, goes to Endor, consults the medium, comes back at, or encounters this ghostly figure of Samuel who tells him you're going to die and uh, you know it's, it's over for you. So Saul returns back late that night. Then, of course, the battle takes place the next day. The Philistines have their chariots in the valley below, and so the Israelites are trying to stay up on the hill country side of it. And then the, the Philistines pursue them, overtake Saul, he falls on his sword. Jonathan dies in the battle. So um, Saul and his heirs are killed in that battle. They take the bodies from over there at Gilboa, and they haul them to the top of the hill, and they suspend them from the wall. Most, we don't know exactly where, again, this is, this is all educated guessing, okay? But the, there's a palace up there built by a pharaoh that was uh, several centuries old at the time of that battle. I think it's 1400 BC. I think it's 1400 Yeah, uh, yeah. The Egyptian yeah. governor's palace, yeah. So it's on the other side of the Fell where you see the awning up there. You just keep going past that and to the other side. There's a palace built by the, an Egyptian governor when the Egyptians ran the area um, that uh, had high walls around it. So it's likely that that was the place that they hung and suspended the, uh, the bodies of Saul and Jonathan. And then it says, the men of Jabesh Gilead came across uh, the Jordan and uh, in a nighttime kind of commando raid, which is it's that direction over that way. They came across the Jordan, snuck into the city, uh, stole the bodies off the wall and brought them back because they remembered how kind uh, Saul had been to them and helping them out and rescuing them earlier, in earlier years and better days. So, <coughs> very dramatic week. And it, it's a fascinating glimpse into the scriptures because I, I think the best storytelling is when you take the microscope to one particular moment in time and you let events play out in real time. And uh, the Bible just grinds to a halt and devotes several pages to this one week of time and all these things are going on. So that's why it's worth breaking down and talking about because so many elements and aspects are at play, both in the forging of David's character and the end of Jonathan's life and, and all that's taking place at the same time. So just wanted to make sure you're oriented as the significance of the site. All that stuff happened right here. And, uh, and then of course you fast forward a thousand years and now you've got one of the cities of the Decapolis and it was a major Roman strategic town. So, interesting upon interesting upon interesting, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 So there's, there's a palace in that sandbox. Yeah.